You don't come through. I swear to God, I don't think I've ever done anything for you to question my honesty this hour. The only thing that matters to her in life is men and alcohol. No matter the type of friend you are to her, she would always put a man over you. You guys, you see the friendships in the house? This is how he's doing. Shaking very seriously. They've played the game to the extent that they don't even know what is what anymore. They don't know who to trust. They don't know which motive is pure and which is not. Like, they are just in a very weird state right now. Even friendships are formed before they entered into the house. We still have that shaky situation. So let's talk about what happened last night. A lot happened last night as regards this whole friendship dynamics and some other sorts of, sorts of things. So let us just welcome back to my channel guys if you are new here please do subscribe turn on your post notifications so that you can get notified each time i post a brand new video and do not forget to give it a thumbs up so let's begin with cross and perry situation yesterday i spoke about cross and perry having a conversation and it had to do with trust cross was just telling perry that um he doesn't feel like he can trust him in the house anymore because of what he has what he had been hearing the things that some people have had been saying to him and then also things that some of the things that he has seen with Perry in the house, right? Perry was just trying to explain himself. And then later on, they showed Cross, who was um, in the kitchen area. And then Perry came out of the diary room. Some of the housemates acknowledged him coming out of the diary room. Talani Bag now said that he looked like he had been crying. She will be worried. Perry, No, he's not good. My father's not good. He Sissy also spoke about the fact that he was crying yesterday and for the most part of last night they did not really show him so I think he was having his time yesterday and then Neil was now talking to Cross and like trying to find out what's up he said that Cross and Perret they've not been given the um, Cross and Perret type relationship that they know that what is going on there and Cross now spoke about the way he was feeling Neil now told him that Perry has his back. He said, are you 100% sure of that? And then Neil is like, um, Perry has your back. And then Cross was now saying that he feels like Perry has been playing him um, based on the recent happenings in the house and things that he has seen. That he just feels like Perry is playing him. I feel my head. You know, I feel like you guys did not give that to Cross Perry. Yes. Regardless, what was the I'm 100% sure I didn't this. That's a situation that happened for one time. So for the different things that Cross pointed out that made him feel like he cannot trust Pere, one was the Elebaye situation, the whole plotting and planning to get her out of the house. And then two was what Pere said to Sissy, according to Sissy. So according to Sissy, Pere called Cross the enemy, right? So you guys remember there was a time that this whole conversation was going around that Pere said, so you're now with the enemy. Sissy told Cross and then Alex also warned him against Pere. So these are the things that he pointed out. And then for Doi and Ilebaye, they also had their issues <laughs> again. Doi was just saying that she's done being there. That all Ilebaye cares about is man and alcohol. That no matter how you're there for her as a friend, that is not going to matter. I think the only thing that matters to her in life is men and alcohol. No matter the type of friend you are to her, she would always put a man over you. I don't have friends like that. I'm truly, genuinely not interested. I don't mind if you never speak again in this house. Because with the way I've been there for you, uh -uh. So for this doing and never is matter, what um, cause the issue is the pardon me please situation from last week. You guys know how it went. So um, they were trying to rally around to get people to pardon Ilebaye and then Doi now pitched for herself to be pardoned instead and gave her reasons why she wanted the pardon me please and she ended up getting it. Now Venita told Ilebaye about it earlier on during the week and then I think two days ago Suma also told her about it and she started feeling some type of way. Right, so she um, she gave Doni a hint, first of all. That's when Venita told her she gave Doni a hint, but didn't really give her like full details. So Doni was angry that she did not really give room for them to have a conversation so that she can clear the air. Doni now called her entitled, naive. You know when you give somebody so much, so easily, they start to become entitled, they don't appreciate it anymore. I also they think she's very naive. Yeah, she's very nice, she's very entitled, she's very stupid. And stupid is I don't think I, she's I know, stupid. I think she's very gullible. She's, uh, yes, I she's gullible. She's, she's, she's easily she's, swayed. I Oh, uh, this was a choke. These two people are quarreling every three market days. Tomorrow we'll be hearing they cannot break our friendship. Nobody can come and spoil it. They are trying to break us. It's okay. It's all right. Then Levi was also talking to Angel about the fact that she was feeling disappointed 
that Doyin did not come and have a conversation with her that even if that part of Miss Please situation happened that Doyin should have told her about it, but Doyin did not have a conversation with her. So I think she, she was just trying to pick out the table. I don't think she was doing it. Okay, I get that we were trying to assess the best case in the community. I mean, I'm like, I'm not worried. So I'm like, okay, well, never mind. It's just like, talk to me. And I just feel betrayed. I just feel like, I spoke to you about this thing. Then we now had the Doyin and Sissy situation, which was the most stressful from last night because it was really, really long. And I had to even find a way to like put it together in such a way that no information would be lost so let's just take it one step at a time the way this issue started was with the conversation that Dory had with white money in fact she was having an issue with white money she told white money to keep something for her i think it's egg and then white money was there trying to fight for sissy's own and sissy was also there then sissy was like ah white money so you're um fighting for me and then um Dory now said ah now wow it's not like i'm judas is carrots and then she now made a statement like um you know anyway people pick who they care for sissy now said oh so you don't want him to care for me and then doing now shunned um herself and white money white money was also talking to her so they just shunned them and left the kitchen right so later on they was now saying that she didn't hear sissy's comments that it was white money that she was responding to <laughs> My mind was so focused on that conversation I was having with Angel that I couldn't wait to get back to it. I thought it was white money that spoke, and that's why I came to one game. I did not capture the initial conversation where white money, doing and Sissy were having that conversation because I didn't really feel like it was going to lead to anything. But unfortunately, it did, right? So that's why I just had to explain it. So um all of these things is what started the conversation about their friendship so sissy was now saying that um doi doesn't come true for her and that she doesn't feel like she's usually on her side especially in public where she expects her expects the people that are closest to her to understand her you don't come through i swear to god i don't think i've ever done anything for you to question my honesty this hour but sometimes when there's people here and it looks like you're not on my side you don't understand you don't know me and i feel like even when you know me it's you that i chill with more it's you that speak for so at the point they now took the conversation outside and we did not really see the beginning part of the conversation kyle did not take us there early but from what i got um cc highlighted three three different times where she felt like doing did things that made her question their friendship right so one of it was the situation with alex i'll i'll get into that and then secondly the situation with kidwire and then um the situation with cross right for alex's situation she said that with doi doi is always questioning her when she's expressing how she feels about alex and then that makes her feel some type of way i don't even get how i question it aisha is not just you thinking that way aisha is not that i was like hey do i look like a mad crazy person that i just wake up and just start assuming things or seeing things but cc i wish you'd have told me that that made you feel something because from my i opinion, did i told you i never I told you. maybe you're not day. listening but i told you then doing now said that she feels like it's just a misunderstanding that she may have said things in the past that made cc feel like oh she was doubting what she was saying but that's not the case and that to solve this whole issue they should just stop talking about alex they should not you know bring up alex in their conversations again and since he was now saying that there's no need for that that alex is not looking for her trouble again that they are now cool that alex is even trying to get close to her and everything and that she would not even need more like she would not even need to talk about her i just think this is a complete misunderstanding maybe i've said things and you've assumed that oh for her to say this thing maybe she thinks i'm like i think the best is just not speak about her at all. And she's not looking for trouble anymore right now, so I think she's even trying to get closer and closer and closer. So that's cool. I don't have any reason to even talk. There's no wahala. So the conclusion that Doi now made is that they will not talk about her and then she assured her that you know all of those things she did not do it knowingly and that she did not even know Alex personally from anywhere she didn't really have an opinion about her so there's no way she would have been doubting her and then she now apologized we've spoken about Alexism that's on the side I didn't know you felt that way I apologize if you felt that way we should never speak about her again because honestly I've never doubted anything you said about her because I don't know her that well I have no opinion on her, so that on the side won't speak about her again. Then they now moved on to the Kidwire situation. They were taking things one by one. So for the Kidwire situation, the issue was that Doi scolded Kidwire when the Lebaye video was played. Doi went off on Kidwire, and then the next day she was with him, right? So that was the issue on ground. So Doi was now telling Sissy that um she has a soft spot for Kidwire. So the fact that she was with him the next day doesn't mean that her anger 
was unreal or it was fake or anything and then sissy now told her that for her if she says she's not cool with somebody then she's not cool with somebody i told you that i like him i liked him at the time when i was in this house the times that i've said to you that i was upset i was genuinely upset so the fact that i reconcile with him later does not mean that it was not that i never if i'm your friend i expect high level of honesty i've been all, so, I hold was on, honest hold on. So Sissy believes that Doyin was just acting drama the day she went off on Kidwire after the Eleva Ye video was played. That for Doyin it was just a game based on the fact that she became cool with him afterwards. Now Doyin was now trying to explain to her that um, she did not agree with his behavior at the time. Doesn't mean that you know they cannot be cool again. That she she did not just agree with what he did. And then Sissy now told her that she's being defensive and she said she's not being defensive. There were times where I didn't approve of his behavior, but then again, I warm up to him again and we reconcile. It doesn't mean that when I said I didn't approve of what he said, I lied. You're being defensive. You're not actually I'm not being defensive. I'm, I'm telling you. What I'm trying to say is if I tell you I'm not cool with this person, I'm being real. But it looks like all this is just being drama that you just want us to do. So this was now telling her that it's a whole bunch of things that have happened that brought her to this point that she is now concerning the friendship that she hopes that um, Doi is not thinking that she is unreasonable and then, then Doi now told her that she doesn't feel like she's unreasonable but that um, for her she doesn't think that the things that Sissy is picking on will be the things that things that she would pick on that she knows that you know she can pick up on these little things but it will not be the same things that Sissy is talking about right now Sissy was now saying that she knows her that she picks on little little things and then doing out all of that, you know, she just allow her to express herself. I want to be sure that you're not thinking I'm unreasonable. But if that's what you're thinking, I don't think you're unreasonable. Would I pick the exact things you picked? No. But is it possible for me to pick up on small, small things and think about it? In the back, you. Yes, yes that's what I was going to And it's this thing you keep cutting me short. Man, you remember? No, 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 you keep cutting me short. You're not unreasonable. So after they had talked for a while, um, doing now told Sissy that if there's anything that she does to her that makes her feel some type of way, that she should let her know that a lot of things that Sissy mentioned this night, she has not mentioned it before. So she didn't even know that it was making Sissy feel somehow. And then um, Sissy now got to a point where she said that doing was gaslighting her. And Doyin now said, I'm not, you know, trying to gaslight, gaslight you or anything. Um, Sissy said that she's asking her not to feel the way she's feeling and then she's also telling her not to pick on the things that she's picking on and is like that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying that you should not pick on these things just let me know if there's anything that's get, um, getting to you at that point so that i can you know fix it or try what you're doing is literally gaslight that's what no doing. i would never because gaslight you what i've said to you that i understand where you're coming from if you understand you're not telling me i shouldn't feel that way i'm not asking things. you not to feel that way this is somebody that has been taking this for a long period of time you did not tell me what you were thinking what am i supposed to know okay, now, now, now you're telling me i shouldn't pick up things i'm not asking uh, you not to pick up things i'm asking you to communicate the things you pick up mm. Oh, well, at this point, the conversation was heading to where I don't even know. And later on, they now showed Doi where she was outside alone. I don't know how the conversation ended. They didn't show us. So I don't know whether it ended in a in a heated way or maybe they just said, okay, we are done. Right? But they showed where Doi was soliloquizing. She was now <laughs> she was now talking about the things that Sissy brought up. And then she now said something about ah that so many some people are mad but they are wearing clothes or something like that. You can just like listen because you know like her. Am I in kindergarten? Are you ever talking to kid why even though I told you I was angry with him? I'm sorry for not telling you about what happened to cross. Even though I was drunk and I didn't remember it. Not so much people are naked on the road. Some are actually putting on clothes because what the fuck? You guys, people are really going crazy in this big brother's house. Even doing that is just solely localizing. It was just funny to see, like, what are you doing? Why are you now talking to yourself? So, um, it got to a point, she now said that in fact, that what she needs is a good knack, a good head, a good massage, that she needs to be satisfied in the, in the other room. I miss my man. I need a massage, I need head, I need a good kiss. And I need sex because maybe that's the solution to this madness because I think people are sexually frustrated. Then later on, she now went inside and they were having a conversation about doings, doings basically. And in that goes to the point that they were not talking about head, like they were talking about heads on period, everything. And then doing now explained, I mean, doing now said that she, she doing now talked about her experience. Your period. Hey, we got to Yo, why somebody had to react? Like, what are you talking about? How did this happen? Like, 
okay moving on let me just move on from that and then white one now did something very funny so they were talking about pleasers and no pleasers liking pleasers and pleasers in bed basically and then white money now said that they would have told him now that he would have begged them properly and then he now started begging them like Please. I'm a pillow princess. I want to be pleased. Okay, I'm not and a I'm pillow somebody princess, that yeah. likes to please. I love pleasers. Perfect. Child. Men that don't care about their yeah. yeah. pleasures. Why don't you just tell me? I tell you, baby, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. Baby, please. I won't be the girl. White woman is not serious. I'm sure he knew the pleasing that they were talking about. He just wanted to make the situation hilarious and it was quite hilarious. And then Angel was now talking about the fact that she doesn't mind watching her guy um knock somebody basically and um so far she's the one that chooses the person and she doesn't mind if it's her friend uh white money not told Soma ha yeah you know yeah are in for something and then Soma said he's equal to the task i don't mind watching my partner getting fucked by someone well it depends on if i choose the person and who the person is somebody get one if i choose my friend I wouldn't mind. Your friend? No. I will beat you and that friend out of my face. You guys, I had since yesterday. My ear was just standing, standing up and down. I say, hmm, it's okay. Then the night, the way they were even sleeping, someone was sleeping and holding Angel like he did not want to let go. But yeah, they just chilled, played. Nothing really happened. Head of house room was calm and chilled. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. And do not forget to give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to see you on the next one. Bye, I love you.